All right, welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about sketching deflected shapes. So we're going to go over four rules that deal with sketching the deflected shapes of beams and frames. All right, so we're not going to worry about trusses, or we're going to talk about these four rules for beams and frames. We'll also cover some examples. All right, so rule number one is that the curvature must match the moment diagram, all right? So the curvature of your deflected shape must always match the moment diagram. That means you gotta start with your moment diagram. So I'm gonna leave the link in the description below for another video that can help you construct shear and bending moment diagrams. Now we also have to satisfy our boundary conditions. So in this case, we have a fixed boundary condition at the base of this frame or this structure so we're going to need to make sure that the angle remains 90 degrees, indicative of a fixed boundary condition. The third rule here is very similar. Our original angles, our rigid angles that is, they need to remain the same. They can't change. Of course, it's, if it's a hinge, we, the angle can change. But if it's a rigid angle, it must remain unchanged. And in our case, this 90 degree angle here has to stay 90 degrees. The last rule here is perhaps the trickiest for folks to grasp sometimes. The member lengths must not change, okay? They must remain unchanged. That means that horizontal members like beams, the horizontal projection must remain the same, and vertical members like columns, the vertical projection must remain the same as the original length, all right? So the key here, as I write this out, the key is that the axial deformations occurring in these members are very small compared to the flexural deformations. In other words, the change in length is negligible compared to the change in curvature. All right, it's time to have some fun here, time to do some experimenting. So we're gonna try and sketch these shapes. One by one, we're gonna follow each of the rules. So let's start with the first one. We can follow the first one, we'll start from the bottom, we'll just draw this arcing shape just like our bending moment diagram would suggest. Okay, now let's try to improve upon that one by following rule number two, satisfying boundary conditions. So now we know we have to have a 90 degree at our base boundary condition here. All right, that's looking a little better. Let's label that 90 degree angle. Moving on to the third rule, it's as simple as changing this angle here in the top left from not being 90 degrees to being 90 degrees. So we'll just rotate a little bit our, our last section here, label that as 90 degrees. All right, last comes probably the trickiest rule, the member lengths need to remain unchanged. So if we look at this initial column here, it got significantly shorter and that can't be the case. So let's redraw it, stretching all the way up to the same level as the original member. And then we have to redraw the second member here stretching the length equal to the length of the second member. And it's about the projections here, right? So we don't need to take into account the fact that it's on a diagonal. We'll label this left side as delta and this right side as delta to show that those are the same length on either side of this member. So its horizontal length is the same. All right, great work. Now it's time to take our skills to the next level with some more in-depth examples. All right, here we can see just a really simple column with a fixed end, and we got a beam on the right, but we notice a problem. We need bending moment diagrams, all right? So you can't really start sketching until you've got your bending moment diagrams. Boom, there they are. All right, fantastic. So I'm gonna go a little quick here, just pause the video if you need to slow down, and you can always skip back to the first page to recall the four steps, all right? But I'm gonna go in sequential order, doing several attempts to sketch the beam or column or frame, and you can see the progress as we adhere to the four steps. First thing we're gonna do here is just match the curvature, right? That's rule number one. But hey, we kind of violated our boundary condition. So rule number two, let's fix this bottom angle at 90 degrees. Rule number three doesn't apply because we don't have any other angles, but we're in violation of rule number four. Our length has changed. So we're gonna bring that all the way up to the dotted green line. Now our length is correct. We got all four rules. That sketch of that deflected shape is good to go. 
For this beam on the right, we'll start by simply following the moment diagram here. Oops, it looks like I, I drew this next one a little too far, right? The, uh, the slope is supposed to change right at that point of inflection there. And then I'll draw the curvature the other way in the last section. Okay, but we got some issues here. If we, we can see there our roller has lifted off the ground. That's no good. So uh, we're going to have to address that. You know, additionally, we got problems with our, with our boundary condition at this fixed end. So just watch as I go and I kind of fix these things one by one to come into compliance with the four rules. The fourth rule doesn't really come into play because this length of this beam, you know, we're not really tempted to change that. Uh, but I got to pay attention to basically rules number one and two. I got to make sure the curvature is always matching. So I got to pay attention to these two points of inflection, one at the hinge, one right before the roller. And then I end up with this. Okay, and it's not bad, it's a good deflected shape, but notice that the slope is actually becoming less pronounced towards the end, and I'm not really reflecting that in my deflected shape. So I'm actually gonna give it another shot here, and I'm gonna try and draw it a little more accurately. All right, so take a look at what I think is a good deflected shape, and you know, it's, it's not an exact science, so perhaps, perhaps you have more artistic skills than me. All right, so we've done some solid work here. Now, I wanna try two more examples, but this time I'm not gonna walk you through. Let's just put them up here. All right, now I'm already giving you the bending moment diagrams, and I'm gonna just sketch them for you on you know, advanced speed. Now, I would recommend pausing this video and trying these on your own first. Then you can, you can check back, but try not to look. I know it's hard because I'm already doing them here, but just give them a shot and then compare later, all right? Always remember to carefully label your final sketches, including all the angles and dimensions that have changed. So I like to use just generic symbols like delta or x just to show that these two lengths are the same. Remember, length didn't change. You know, you get the picture. You can't really over-label these things, all right? Just to recap, Four basic rules, right? You gotta make sure that the moment diagram follows the curvature of your deflected shape. Then you gotta make sure your boundary conditions are, you know, you're, you're respecting them. Then you gotta make sure your internal angles are unchanged. And finally, that your member lengths are unchanged. And that's the one that most people get wrong or don't label properly. So pay special attention to that one. All right, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.